Good morning, my name is Lisa Deisel. I'm from the UNISA Directorate for Counseling and Creative Development. A very warm welcome to everyone who could join us this morning. Uh, this morning we will be talking about summiting Kilimanjaro and with me I've got my colleague Dr. Chipiwa Kurisang and she will share with us um, how we can use the metaphor of summiting Kilimanjaro to help us manage our studies as well as other areas of our life. Thank you Dr. Kurisang, a very warm welcome. Thank you Lisa and thank you for everyone who joined us. Um, this summit it's something that is very deep, but it's also very related to us as UNISA student, because when you are studying, you are like summiting Kilimanjaro of your studies, of your career. Even the studies that you are embarking on, you might be using them to summit other areas of your life. So therefore, I thought if we can use this metaphor for this conversation, it could help a lot of us to really think differently about our summit. So we all know that the Kilimanjaro is this majestic mountain in Africa. Everybody want to summit it. And to be at the top of the summit, it's very rewarding. It's a huge achievement. Some people will share with you that it seems so unreal, even though they would be summiting, but when you reach there, it's like this is something else. The real experience though, is not only when you reach the top of the summit, is when you are on different levels or what they refer as camps. And that's the same thing with our careers and that's the same thing with our journey when we summit with our studies. We must also understand people summit for different reasons. Even as you are studying, you are not studying only to get this qualification. Maybe you are also studying to give credit to your parents. Maybe some of your parents are no more. Maybe you are studying to honor your family because you will be the first person to even get this degree. Maybe even from your community, you are the first person to get a qualification and for you to summit, it will really develop your community. We know that people summit, they summit maybe to say they want to take a girl child to school. There are people like the Mandela Foundation, they summit for different reasons every year. It could be a fundraising for a children's hospital. It could be to honor even other people who passed on as they summit with them. In the journey of our career, we must also understand we are also summiting for different reasons, as I articulated earlier. We need to think about what affects the journey. When people summit, there are so many things that can affect that expedition or the whole summit. What you carry with you, your previous experience and your preparation. Sometimes people summit several times before they really succeed. And in the process, they could have experienced a lot of trauma, losing other members, weather conditions, their health could have deteriorated. As they go again to the next summit, sometimes those previous experience impact on them. Your team members, your support team can also affect how you summit. You know, if when you summit, you just don't eat anything and everything. You don't just wear any particular clothes because the weather conditions can also affect you. Your thinking about the summit also plays a role. We are recording or we are busy with this presentation during a very difficult time in South Africa where we are experiencing load shading. That affects your summit. We are even busy writing exams and there is load shedding and some of us, we don't have all the resources and facilities that could allow us to write. But you must remember how you think about the load shedding. Some of the things you can do outside of the box can help you in your journey and in your summit. As we summit, we also experience different challenges. 
some of the challenges we experience could be due to weather as some people struggle with cold weather or wind. In your studies, weather could represent a number of things. It could also represent the real weather. Maybe you struggle to study in winter, which delays your studies, or you struggle to study in summer. But it could be, like I said earlier, on load shedding. It could be also other pressure from your life. All that can impact on your journey. Sometimes as we summit, as you are studying, you could also experience physical challenges where you feel exhausted. You could be exhausted physically, mentally, or emotionally. During the summit, some people may develop medical challenges such as frostbite breathing problems. Even in your journey of studying, as you are impacted emotionally and physically, you could also experience medical problems. You may also develop mental challenges. You feel overwhelmed and suffocating, and this could lead you to feeling scared that you might not summit. Sometimes you even feel that you are going to die. Even with your studies, you could feel like I'm going to fail and that could impact your journey of summiting. I like this story. The story was there also on online or social media. This is a story of a blind man who was summiting in a group of people and one night he thought he's going to rest in his camp and then he could overhear the rest of the team members talking about him, saying he is delaying us. So tomorrow morning we must tell him that he must be left behind. And he had all that conversation as he was lying in his tent. In the morning as they call a meeting and they wanted to tell him that you're going to remain behind, he told them, you must allow me to make a decision for myself whether I remain behind. And I could imagine it even in your studies, I don't know what you are experiencing, but you might be lying in your bed and overhearing people saying you can't make it or you have failed. Maybe as you receive feedback of your assignments, of your dissertation, the feedback is saying to you, you can't make it. Is that what you are hearing? Or is that the voice that is in your head that is telling you you can't make it and you think it's the voice from outside? Can't you tell yourself that I must wait, I must give myself a chance, I must not tell myself or allow other people to tell yourself that you can't make it. You need to make a decision for yourself and I would imagine the decision should be I need to patiently and slowly continue to summit. This is your own journey. I'm not sure also what is happening in your own journey, how it feels in your journey of summiting your Kilimanjaro. I'm not sure when you wake up and you see yourself in the mirror and you see yourself summiting what is happening. Maybe it's feeling very cold. But remember when it's cold, you can't sit still or stand in the same place. You need to keep walking, even if it means to walk slowly so that your body can have circulation and to avoid hypothermia. Maybe in your journey, it might mean even writing one sentence, even reading one paragraph a day. You are moving so that you don't have hypothermia. Sometimes maybe you need to stay in the same camp another night. You don't need to rush to say, I want to move on. Maybe you are physically fatigued, but just one night sleeping in that same camp, it could help you to recover. So think about where you are in your own journey and what will this mean to you? Remember, sometimes we push ourselves so much because we are thinking about the destination and then what you, we do harms us or impact on our journey. As I said earlier, what are you hearing? Are you hearing your team members saying you need to stay behind? 
as I also said earlier, is it really your team members or it's your internal voice that keeps on telling we can't do this anymore? Maybe it is also a voice that is coming from another summit. Sometimes we hear voices based on our previous experiences. As I said earlier, there are a number of things that affect us what we carry from our previous experiences. It could be the summit or something else. Maybe you are hearing a voice that says you can not make it, but it's not even coming from another summit from the Kilimanjaro. It's coming from your experience of hiking that went wrong or that you couldn't make it or you felt that you were delaying the people you were hiking with, or you just felt not good enough. But think about what you are hearing and how what you are hearing is impact on you at this time of your journey, or maybe not only impacting on you, also your relationship with those you are summiting with, the team leaders. In your studies, it could be the supervisors, the research assistant, or other people who need to assist you in your summit. What are your fears? As we summit the Kilimanjaro, we also hear a lot of things and that could provoke a lot of fears. Remember summiting by itself provokes fears and feelings of inadequacy. You might be feeling maybe I'm not strong enough. I'm not fit enough. I'm not sure when you look at yourself, what aspects of your life you look at them in a process that is very negative, you evaluate yourself negatively. And how does this impact on your journey? As you submit, you also need to think about what you need. Things you need that could impact posi positively in your summit. I always joke that salads are very healthy. However, they are not appropriate when you summit. They can sustain you. They will also get um, uh, impacted in the weather. It's not something you can take with on your journey, but if you take build on with, they, they could survive or sustain you for some time. As you summit, you might think you need a rope. Maybe you also need others to hold you and hold your hand. As you summit in a territory that you feel very unstable and weak and scared. Sometimes for us to summit, all we need is to confront our fears. What are you scared about? Also, do you need to tell yourself it is over or you tell yourself it is not over? Do you think you need to accept the message you think you are hearing or you need to dismiss this message and even tell yourself it's not real, it's not there? As we conclude this, I want you to reflect and think about can you relate this metaphor of the summit to your own journey? Maybe it's not even your own journey of your studies, but it could also be your own personal life experiences journey. Maybe you need to take time to reflect why are you summiting? It could be your studies, it could be your career, it could be other aspects of your life that are very personal. And you can take that as a summit of your life, but also think about why do you need to summit? Can this reason also keep you focused on this journey? Even when the weather has changed and it's very windy and it seems uncertain, can you hold into your journey to say, this is the reason I'm summiting. If you are summiting to say, I want the little girls in my village to get school shoes, can that keep you focused? Like other people who summit Kilimanjaro, they commit to say they're going to die so that those cool girls can have shoes or other cause. I'm not sure what is the cause in your life, and I'm not even sure where it's positioned, whether it's positioned in your personal spheres of life or in your studies or in your career. Just take time to reflect on that. Thank you. You can contact us.
and have follow up conversation so that we can support you as you summit. We are here to hold your hand in your journey so that you can summit. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Kori Song. Um, I was just thinking as you were talking about this um, support that you mentioned. Um, so I'm wondering if we could talk a bit more about, you know, who are the people that you can think of that you need in your team as you are summiting the Kilimanjaro? You know, Lisa, I think you raised a very important question. Sometimes we always think that we need people who have gone through the experience. Yes, maybe in your circumstances, you might be feeling, let me talk to somebody because I feel brutalized and wounded to say when you summit, did you also experience that to normalize your experience as well? But sometimes maybe you don't need any person who have gone through this journey. You might just need a person who can listen and hear you and hear you when you said the message I'm hearing is that I can't submit anymore and that person to just listen to be a soundboard and maybe that person in the process will say, but maybe check where the message is coming from. So it's important to also understand our needs first. As we submit, sometimes we are so overwhelmed and we we get stuck in the sense of being overwhelmed, not thinking about, but who do I need now? I need, I feel very tired. I need someone who can give me food. That's also important as you summit. It's also important as we study because sometimes you even need somebody who can help you just to provide food. This week I was talking to a student who started a game with a friend in his journey of summiting in his studies to say to a friend, if in a day I don't manage to sit for eight hours doing my studies, I owe you 10 rand. But if I manage to then sit eight hours you owe me 10 rent. And it's like a game, but it really helped him to reframe the part of the summit which was difficult and it helped him to overcome the fears and the challenges. Thank you. Um, I was also thinking about, um, you know, you spoke about mental challenges as we are summiting the Kilimanjaro. Um, you know, what are some of the things we could think about as we are experiencing these mental challenges? Uh, what could these be? And also, how do we manage, um, you know, to kind of deal with them in a way that we can still focus on summiting, um, but also taking care of our mental health? Thank you, Lisa. You know, Kilimanjaro has got a particular nature. Sometimes it gets cold, sometimes it gets windy. The same applies with the studies, but however, the challenge is that as human beings, when you walk over the territory that is hard, you normally think this is about me struggling, not embracing that it's part of the journey. And when we think in that way, it's very detrimental to our mental health because most of us, we then become paralyzed especially from this concept that I'm not good enough, I can't do this. And then you can't even think about what is one thing I need to do? Who do I need? So when you are going through difficulty for your mental health, when you start feeling paralyzed and disempowered, you just also need to reflect what is it that is making me paralyzed? Is it because now I'm positioned in this space where I feel inadequate? Who do I need? What, what is it that I can try? And sometimes it's just the smallest thing. Can I just sit down and talk to somebody about where I am and reflect on how this impact on me? And then also in this conversation, talk about what are the smallest things you can start doing every day. We can't just wish it away. When you are just paralyzed, actually you create more problems because you, the more you feel paralyzed, you realize you are not doing what you are supposed to do and then you even feel more bad 
and negative about yourself. Thank you for that. And for a last um, thing, when you were talking about one of the reflection questions, which is, you know, why are you summiting? So your goals, your reasons why you are doing this. I remember um, a very effective activity that we share with um, students is that you could even write this on like a piece of paper and you know put it up on the wall as you're studying so that you're constantly reminded of the reasons why you're doing this and also to regularly revisit those reasons because as we continue with our summit the reasons may even change over time so i was just thinking that that is also a very valuable way for us to remind ourselves of why we are even tenting this, this journey. Yeah, in addition to that, Lisa, I have been so inspired by the Japanese proverb called Ikigai. And in this Ikigai, when you read about it, it has got one question that says, what do you wake up for? And even in this summit, you need to have that reason to say, as I wake up every day in my summit, what am I waking up for? And that must be for yourself. And it must be something that helps you. This Ikigai, they said it's a principle that helps the Japanese to live longer, but also to be mentally very healthy. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Kuri Sang. I was also just thinking about um, our YouTube channel where we will be posting this um, recording. There is also a recording that we did about a topic called thinking differently about challenges. So it may also be helpful for you if you are struggling in your summit um, in any sphere of your life to also go and watch that recording to think about how we could manage um, challenges more effectively. So as I mentioned, we will also post a recording of uh, this presentation on our YouTube channel. It's youtube.com forward slash Yenisa Careers. And we wish you all the best with your summits that you are busy with. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lisa, and thank you to everyone.